Hello everyone, welcome back to Morning Shot. It's Monday the 12th of December, so I don't know if we'll be taking a break in December. Byron, are we taking a break? You're the boss. Uh, no, we're not going to take a break, as in we're not going to take a full-time break, but we may reduce the number of videos. That's me. right, so December is very good for YouTube monetization advertising rates, so we'll just carry on. What is also good for monetization rates is last week, a ship entered Simonstown Harbor at the dead of the night. It's a Russian ship, under sanctioned by the US, and all sorts of dodgy things happened over the period of one night. So Byron, what can you tell us about this ship? Yeah, okay, so I want to start off by saying uh, this is all conjunction, it's all speculative. Now, the reason it's speculative and conjuncture is because nobody actually knows. And that in itself is the reason this whole story is rather interesting. So the ship itself is uh, sanctioned, which means that it's not actually allowed safe harbor anywhere. Well, technically, uh, in any of the countries that uh, don't fund terrorism, I suppose, uh, the ship was apparently on its way to Tanzania, uh, although nobody can actually collaborate that. It's been tracked by the US, so we know it's a sanctioned ship that is a ship of interest. It, docked in South Africa and everybody was like, well, what's it doing here? News 24 claims that it actually went to the site to have a look at the ship. And when they got there, the ship was empty. Some speculation has shown that the ship, when it was arriving in harbor, wasn't carrying a full load. So not entirely sure what it was carrying. There have been reports that people were offloading stuff from the ship and then seen unloading stuff on the ship, which if that is true, and if it has been done with the South African government, is trading with a rogue sanctioned state, which does have consequences for South Africa, namely we could find ourselves also being sanctioned as collaborators. Indeed. So uh, all the witnesses to the story are basically residents of Simonstown, i.e. the people who live there. Right? There's, there were no naval officers at the ship. There were no SARS officials at the ships. There was no custom officials at the ship either. So what, based on what the residents of Simonstown say, the ship arrived in port at night. There were private vehicles, forklifts, and cranes all waved through from security they unloaded a lot of pallets from the ship three or more armed security personnel were in attendance and the containers arriving after midnight and they were unloaded after midnight as well and because it's a private vessel there are rules and regulations around this sort of stuff you don't want trafficking of arms or whatever to happen none of that was available at the time the da is up in arms as always as the karens of the western cape and it appears that for some reason the ship itself switched off its identification systems and the transponders so no other ship in the area or coastal authorities could tell that the ship was actually there when it docked so some of the news outlets have reached out to the navy and various other sandf and they have asked for comments and both have remained silent at this point in time the navy has since come out and said we'll release a official press statement saying what has occurred the reality is that this seems to have bypassed all of the regulations which a normal ship would be required to have in order to dock in the western cape but the way that it's been dealt with has all the hallmarkings of a mafia don rocking up dropping off his uh, illegal drugs or something and, and disappearing which actually brings us on to the question of this speculation now we want to highlight this is speculation we don't have any proof and we don't know of what actually was in the ship but some people are speculating on what may have been in the ship and my view is let's think about this things were taken off the ship and things were then loaded onto the ship the things taken off the ship could either be weapons drugs or cash money. The ANZ elective conference is upon us in a week's time. Perfect opportunity for bribe money to come into the country <laughs> in cash to make sure that the elective conference goes whichever way can pay the most bribes. Weapons, also very important. If the elective conference doesn't go well for a particular faction, they might need a bit of firepower because it could be anarchy for that side of the ANC. Or, or it just could be just straight up a drug transaction or all three of them. Russia is well known to have a lot of drug traffickers all over, from all over the world. And therefore, this could be an opportune time for South Africa to join that because our border controls are absolute shite, as evidenced by this particular story. Yeah, I mean, some speculation may be that it's Russian oil because ESCOM, as you know, is out of diesel and has no means to actually keep the power grid running. You know, I, I wish it was something actually like really useful for the country like the russians sent us over a mini nuclear reactor to plug into our cities to keep us uh, keep us running like that would actually be freaking awesome in which case if that is the case viva anc and screw you da but i very much doubt that's the case i think that probably what it is is something that is illicit so it probably is some form of drug trade i don't know if it's cash for the anc mate like i'm not sure the 
the, the Russians care enough about the ANC to bribe them with cash. And if you really think about it, what currency are they trading in? They're trading in rubles. They're sending over dollars, or they're just sending cold hard, you know, gold bars or something. I don't know. I don't know if it's cash. Russia has hundreds of billions of dollars in dollar reserves. They could just send literally ten million dollars, and that's more than enough to get support of the ANC, uh, which is given anyway. But no doubt the ANC wants to be paid in some ways for that as well. Why would you need money? We did a story this week about literally the cost of bribing some people to, you know, mess up some guy was a, a streetwise too. So why would you need money like <laughs> surely what they need is a franchisee or kfc around the elective conference and to have kfc as the official sponsors of the nc conference i mean that would work as a bribe wouldn't it so alec hogg from biz news actually said this uh with through an interview with uh france crenier and he says based on his sources in the anc if if you're a delegate who gets bribed you get paid fifty thousand rand a month every single month for the next five years that's the bribery amounts that are going to be changing hands at the dog and pony show called the Nats national elective conference 50 50 grand a month for, for five years is really not bad. And there's four or 5,000 delegates. That's a lot of money, man. I changed my mind. I'm joining the ANC, mate. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be at the NEC. <laughs> You're going to be a delegate. I'm coming, Cyril. <laughs> and just for record, I am probable. I'm very probable. Zelin Kize, you know, I'll kiss anyone's ass except Colney House because I don't have any money. No. Mostly. We have standards. We cannot be bought with the Streetwise 2. At least a 16 piece bucket, and we're yours. Indeed. Indeed. So, I mean, that's, that's really the story. We can only rely on speculation. I think it has something to do with the National Elective Conference. I actually, I actually reckon it's drugs. You think it's drugs, huh? Drugs and AK-47s, mate. Like, the typical ANC way. I would agree as well. So let us know in the comments down below. What do you think this Russian ship was uh, transporting? And before we go, we actually need to talk about, do we give a shit that America is now looking at us and saying maybe we need to be sanctioned because we allowed a sanctioned vessel to arrive in South Africa? Do we care? I don't know. I mean, what are they going to do? Turn off our electricity? <laughs> <laughs> impose more freedom and democracy lgbt rights like okay cool they're gonna come here and they'll be like wait a minute there's been a war here for 30 years already <laughs> looks like iraq i'm going to ukraine it's safer there yeah so screw the us we don't care about your sanctions but we do want to know what's on the damn ship thank you so much for watching we'll see you tomorrow bye